Tokyo in Tulsa 2017. We are in the finals of the uncapped tournament. Uh, we just saw two Jackets, three Diamonds take game one over KU in a very decisive victory. And we're already here in Champion Select for game number two. So we'll go ahead and get that underway. They have swap sides. To, uh, two Jackets, three Diamonds on the blue side, mm -hmm. KU on the red side. And just like all their games this tournament, they've been, you know, systematic and just dominant. Yeah. Well, no, real. Uh, at least all the ones we've seen. We didn't get to see any of them in round robin. So. We've gotten to see two so far. Yeah, two very decisive victories over Team Accursed. Mm, the taste of uh, Elise and Nidalee band away once again. We'll probably see that third so jungle band again. Yeah, these are the same two uh, starting bands that we see all last game. We saw these same four. So maybe we'll see the Aurelian Soul band come out we later in this game. Must. Oh, actually. What, did they ban Lee Sin last time? I believe so. Okay. Maybe we'll see the Aurelian Seriously? solo ban. Rakan? No, Seriously? they're just gonna they're not gonna change it up Lame. or anything like that. Feel confident a lot of with their initial draft strategy. Maybe they maybe uh, KU believes like they just had like uh misplays rather than champion select issues. Mm -hmm. It will be Gragas again for Mystic Decade. Mr. DK has a, uh, he's had a good performance. You know, he had some errors. He had that uh, Miss Flash, um, uh, questionable ults. But overall, he's done pretty well on Gragas. Yeah, no, he, he did a really good job on Gragas with his explosive pass. Uh, KU will pick up Graves this time in the jungle rather than um, the Rek'Sai that we saw last year. Graves is still pretty good in the jungle. He uh, He's not as dominant as he had been in the past. Yeah. Uh, when he was the best jungler by far, you know, without question, for four or five patches in a row. Yeah, or, uh, uh, two Jackets, three Diamonds same are team. getting ready to build the same comp they had in <laughs> yeah. game number one. Uh, I guess if it's not broke, you don't have to fix it. Yeah. All right, but KU, what will be their pickup? I pick up the Tom Kench again just for some safety in the bottom lane. Feel confident letting Callista. Quantum Physics do what he wants. Callista is going to come at her. Callista Brahm, a very potent combination. <laughs> Callista here. <it> is. <laughs> Finally. I was wondering if they were going to pick it up before the bans hit, but it looks like they're going to let it go. Quantum Physics has deep champion pool. He's not going to be too upset from Ryan Soul being yeah. banned. Just doesn't get to be as flashy on stream as he uh, would have liked to. Yeah. Uh, uh, I am interested about the Callista pick here. Callista, not a super good champion right now. Oh, uh, really? I thought she was coming back. I don't know about the, the recent changes, but yeah, I'm talking about in the like few, past few patches. Victor she hasn't been... From two jacket, Victor, three really? Uh, that must be a targeted ban. Yeah, at this point, I think they're probably just trying to uh, pinch the mid lane champion pool the same way they tried to yeah. pinch uh, ADC last game because they hadn't picked it up yet. I wonder if Callista is uh, especially good against Zaya specifically. I'm not sure how the matchup goes because you don't see Callista a lot anymore. Yeah. Alright, KU, what's their last man? It's gonna be a Lowey? Uh, uh, that actually, that makes sense. Mechanical Reaper is an Lowey player. Is he? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. <laughs> I mean, we've only seen Gnar and ranked in top lane this yeah, entire tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's not a pick that he'll pull out whenever, but yeah. it is something that he has in his back pocket. In the right matchup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. If you don't have anything you want to ban specifically, it's all right to target ban some champions yeah, I mean, based on match history. Sense because X Y one on Grace, he's not going to have a whole lot of hard CC, so it makes it very difficult to yeah. tank and allow in the top lane. Uh, Jarvin, Jarvin is going to come out. Jarvin is solid champion. He, you know, he's probably going to go uh, top lane. I can't see him going mid. Well, yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, they already have the jungle. Probably going to be top lane. You're right. I still see Graves as an ADC, so sometimes it's a bit confusing. But you know, sadly. He's moved on in the jungle. Okay, so Mechanical Reaver picked up the Gnar. Now, Gnar statistically does well against Renekton, but statistically does not do well against Jarvan, and Kassadin locked in for Quantum Physics. He's destroyed teams in the round robin. He actually Kassadin. destroyed KU in the round robin with Kassadin. Kassadin uh, was the champion he played in that game. Ooh. Now, now this would be interesting. They lock it, they Riven. lock it in. It's Riven for KU. Riven does all right against Nar. You know she can easily dodge the boomerang. Wait, she is a it lot Riven mid or Riven top? Oh, oh yeah. Riven mid, something you you see from time to time. You know those yeah, players I, that play Riven mid also play like Jace mid, and you know they are kind of switch between top and mid. There's one of those flexible champions. Yeah, and um, I mean an AD champion to really punish Quantum Physics for picking Cassian, yeah. but. 
The issue they is they have no magic damage. damage. Full yeah. physical damage oh, team. Bramble Vest is going to be so good this game. I'd yeah. like to see Bramble Vest come out from a lot of the champions on uh, KU two jackets, three full diamonds. Physical damage team. They have to end the game before Mechanical Reaper and Mystic TK build armor, mm -hmm. or else they are just going to get demolished. Oh. The, if you don't remember, during the tank update, uh. A little bit ago, but but still recent enough to talk about. You're talking about. about the one where the Sejuani and Zac got their changes, yes, and they had yes. the... Okay. They changed tank itemization, so they all give less health, but more resistances, which means that building an armor item is less effective against magic damage because you have less health, and the armor doesn't really yeah. help you. But against more against physical damage specifically, armor armor items are going to be more effective especially with like we i've been we've talked about it a lot the bramble vest against callista the bramble vest is a great item yeah you build so, in the thorn mail early you get the cold steel passive you get the return damage and grievous wounds against callista is so good so nar and gragas for mechanical reaper and mystic tk once they build up like two three armor items they're going to be unkillable but on the side of KU honestly yeah so even Cassidy can build armor you know he can pick up the yeah. uh, the arm seeker early he can get ninja tab he doesn't need sword shoes or yeah, no, boots I of lucidity agree. uh and he can be rather tanky by himself even against a full AD comp yeah no this is this is a interesting draft strategy by KU they do have a lot of mobility Clisson's got a lot of jumps Brahm's got a jump Graves has a dash Jarvin, of course, you know, flag and drag. Riven hops around uh, like a bunny. Yeah. So they're going to have a lot of mobility, and we'll see if Quantum can keep up. He will have the Rift Walk to, you know, chase people down, come back, you know, disengage. Yeah, but, I mean, uh... Cassidy is an insanely good scaling uh, mid laner. Yes. The one... And, I mean, they, they're not even really lacking in terms of wave clear because they've got Zaya and Gragas. Zaya's wave clear is somewhat minimal, but Gragas' is, is excellent as far as jungle. It's better go. than some other ADCs, like uh, Draven and Ezreal, all single target. They don't have any wave clear. So she's at least got that in her. She, yeah. I think she's about middle of the pack as far as wave clear goes. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Kench not really going to help at all here, but Cassidy and Gragas do have really good wave clear and wave push. Uh, this Cassidy's wave there isn't that good. Oh, uh, so it is when he has a rift walk at level six. Cause well, you just rift walk it, charges your E, you E, and the whole wave is already well, that's, dead. Well, that's wave push. That's not really wave clear. If they get pressured, then Cassidy can't really rift walk into the wave or else yeah, okay. just die. I can see what you're saying. Uh, more than often, he'll have uh, you know E up for that though, which yeah, will help a lot. Pulse. Force pulse, and you just auto each minion one time, Q and one maybe. All right, so KU they have they have to get a lead early, or else this game is going to fall apart for them. Yeah, and you I don't want to let them build armor items. If they get their armor items, the game is already over. Yeah, this is this is going to be rough for them. Okay. And uh, Doctor Wildly, we did talk to him between the games. We'll see if he takes the right uh, keystone this game. <laughs> Courage of the Colossus, Tom Kench from game number one. That's it. That was an interesting choice by Dr. Wildy. Sadly, we didn't get to talk about it in the loading screen because this setup is fantastic. Yeah, he loaded into that game super fast. Also, the loading screen also has to do with the user's, uh, the, uh, the player's uh, setups. Yeah. So I'm assuming KU and Two Jackets, Three Diamonds all have fairly good computers KU running. KU is sponsored by University, uh, I believe. Yeah. I mean, it, KU's does stand for Kansas University, right? Can I we get confirmation I on that? Right. I mean, we might not even get to see the keystones before we get into the game. I hope we do. That's I'd like to talk about them. Uh, nope, nope, shit. Nope. I well, saw Curse of the Colossus on somebody. I saw Deathfire, probably on Cassidy. Yeah, that's become the standard on Cassidy. It's so good on Cassidy. Best for Cassidy and players, but uh, after that he got nerfed into the ground. You know he was Olaf or uh, Irelia. You know, you know the average whatever memes then, you want to say. He came, he came back. As yeah, a top he laner. came back as a top laner. It was so it was so strange seeing Cassidy in top. You saw a lot of weird like bruiser esque mages up there. It was a very strange time in league. So mechanical reaper statistically should have a disadvantage against space in the top lane. Uh, yeah, Jarvan. Able to close the gap very efficiently. Nar not super tanky while uh, Mini, he loses a lot of his base health and things yeah. like that. Uh, in general, Nar's not very good against champions that can dive onto him. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. he does well into Renekton, uh, but that's... That's uh, because Renekton's double dash is very telegraphed. Yeah. You know, when he's got his uh, 
like his Fury champion, or Rage champions Delta. like Irelia is considered a hard counter to Gnar. Uh, Jarvan yeah. considered good against Gnar. Uh, I remember when I was uh, playing on my Smurf in Gold, I just played Wukong a lot and just killed Gnars all day long. <laughs> Uh, that's what I was playing on the Smurf a lot when Nar first came out and he was really good. That didn't hit anybody. They actually don't know Ku is there. Uh huh. I don't. I'm not really sure what they're planning to do here either. I guess they're just standing there in case somebody comes to wait toward. for someone to face check into him. Nope. That's, here they oh, go. Oh, they're gonna invade the Raptors here. All right. Looking for it. They, there's no vision on the side of two jackets, their diamonds. They're going to wrap around here, get the war sent. Oh, there's, yeah, they're stealing the Raptors, like you said. Mystic yeah, PK. taking the Raptors uh, from Gragas does a lot. He can take them at level two. Yasuo is a good counter to Nar. I don't know if I can confirm or deny oh, that. Yasuo is a really good counter to Nar because you uh, windwall his boomerang and he doesn't get the reduced cooldown on it because he can't pick oh, it up. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't come back. All right. Uh, Windwall is a long cooldown itself, but I guess if you're just blocking the boomerang, Nar doesn't really have any other projectile abilities. Yasuo sadly not a top laner anymore, so no, we don't have. Okay, we don't there's a quite, lot of Yasuo top players. It's it's definitely not as good as mid lane now. You mm -hmm. know they've nerfed a lot of the items that made that viable. Thank God. All right, Sprite is hit the level two. He's actually takes more damage than he bargained for from quantum physics. Uh, starting items are pretty standard. We see uh, the refillables on the junglers, their respective jungle items. Crafting potion on Jarvan top is pretty common to Cassidy starting with I, the Dark Seal. I didn't seal. get to see what happened up there in that top, in that red buff. XY1 and Mystic DK had a little bit of an altercation. Ayukura and Dr. Waldi actually trading favorably onto Pippi and Shenny. Pippi down to about half HP already. Yeah, it's hard for Callista to do much. Uh, something I do like about Callista here, though, is that I think she can dodge the skill shots coming from Ayakura. I mean, she, obviously she can dodge skill shots really easily. She is playing Callista. But it's going to be hard for her to, you know, effectively snare her with uh, Feather Call. Uh, or Blade, blade Call. There, yeah. yeah. Feather Storm is the ultimate. Feather Storm. Blade Caller is the, the pulley, the vacuum. We called thingy. it Root Caller a lot because it roots people. And that's also an actual ability name, so please. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of calling of different things here. Uh, CS, you know, it's it's really early in the game. It's still pretty even. Uh, we don't really have a lot to talk about here, but they are going to land the root. She's under half health. I don't know. She's She has not popped her potion yet, so she's still got that. But if they continue this trend, it's going to be really easy if they get one snare off, you know, um, auto, tongue, auto, and get the devour off on the Callista. Mystic Decade's level 4, He's but he's only got 7 CS. I don't know exactly what XY1 has been doing. I, I haven't been able to see what he's going for. Well, Sprite jumping onto Quantum Physics with his combo, but Quantum turns it back around with a Force Pulse. Here comes Mystic Decade into the mid lane, but uh, Sprite already running out the other side. Yeah. Uh, Riven, not easy to chase down before a Rift Walk is available. And uh, Graves is going to invade again. It looks like he's going to try and get a ward down. He did ward the Raptor Bush. He looks like he's going to move towards Crux to deny even more XP. Yeah, it Crux looks like the junglers have opted for vertical jungling. Yeah. Uh, Mystic Decade on the enemy red, red side, as is XY1. But, you know, they started the Raptors, and I think here is why. They're going to be able to pick up the Raptor Camp again, which Watch is a huge portion. Is unloading a lot of damage onto Sprite. Cassidy is so powerful. Especially because each cast of Riven's uh, Q, I believe, charges Force, uh, pulse, force yeah. pulse. Yeah. So that is one of the reasons I can see Riven not being great into Cassidy, even though she is AD. She jumps forward onto space because Mystic Decade was there, but they all they do is successfully force the flag and drag under a tower. Uh, Raptor's taking twice by Graves now. That is not what you want to see. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to start pulling him ahead in terms of gold and EXP. He hasn't transitioned that into a lead for the levels yet. Quantum Physics is ignited, and here comes XY1, but Quantum Physics, he's going to he make is it gonna out walk nice and out. safely. The, actually, no ults available on either side for them would have easily finished off Quantum there. Yeah, and he didn't even have to burn his flash. Sprite uses a summoner, doesn't get a whole lot for it. Space goes in with a flag and drag, but now Mechanic Reaper able to auto-attack him with impunity. And we do see the Kindle Jump coming up for Riven. She wants to build defensively, but I think Hex Drinker would have been a better buy here. Uh, she wants to get itemized towards that CDR as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's going to build 
the Kindle gem. I'm not sure whether she's going to go for Lethality or just rush that Black Cleaver. Maybe rush the Death Stance. Lethality might be a good idea. You know, it depends on really how the game goes. If you know they start getting more ahead, Lethality is going to be better because it does now scale with the your champion's level and not the enemy champion's level. Yep, Sprite. Gonna get some free damage from Quantum Physics, but he'll turn it back around with a third Broken Wings knockback up. Sprite uh, ready with a level 6. Wristlock not yet available. Quantum Physics will hit it here fairly soon. Oh, misses that CS. Unlucky. <laughs> Yeah, if they get the engage, if Riven does get the engage off before Quantum hits level six, which uh, he still isn't, she might be able to just one yeah, shot. Yeah, is trying to just uh, zone Quantum away from as much experience as he can. Here he goes. He goes in with the broken wings. He's got the wind slash. Oh, not enough. He canceled the auto attack. Yeah, <laughs> probably would have gotten him that kill. Yeah. Oh, and XY1 getting found by Mystic DK, but it takes both parts of end of the line. XY1 going in. It's Cheney. Flash for the exhaust. Throw him with the winner's fight. And there's the Flash for Bros. fight. And Flash is on the Dr. Wild. He devours up. Mystic DK flashes away. Spits him out. They're running for their lives. They got the tongue lash. And now KU, they flash three people over the side, and they don't get anything for it. Even Mystic DK is sliding away the red buff. The devour was so well timed there. I really thought he was dead. In fact, yeah, when I saw the devour, Reaper actually about to get jumped down by the Cataclysm in space! Picks up first blood. Solo kill. Ayukura now has a huge number of end stacks, but they devour him up. It doesn't matter. The spears ripped out from inside. Tom can just come but here's one of physics. Teleport into the bottom lane. Rift block is available. They're not gonna get it. And it's two kills to zero in favor of KU. Calista really good at punishing Tom Kinch and Zaya. You know, the ult doesn't remove the spears uh, from Featherstorm, I should say. Zaya's ult does not remove spears. She becomes untargetable, but she's still going to have those spears in them. And Rind has a fairly uh -oh. long distance. Quantum Physics is back in there. So is Mystic DK. Jenny going to get slowed up by the horse pull. Throws up the unbreakable belly slam from Quantum, uh, Mystic DK. Jenny is ignited, but is it going to be enough? He's got potions running. He's not going to die! Pippi has to get away, but they don't get anything for it. Quantum Physics is denied some more. Yeah, just not enough. Um, Zaya wasn't there to provide enough backup damage. Gragas, Tom Kinch, they do provide uh, some, you know, form of damage. Gragas a lot more than Tom Kinch. Tom Kinch unable to do a lot to help them there. If he had uh, been any other support, I think, he might have uh, secured the kill with maybe a ranged auto attack or one spell. And now, I think behind, across the board for uh, two Jackets, three Diamonds, KU t fighting back, and they're denying away more buffs from Mystic DK. Yeah, uh, XY1 has done a great job of denying uh, camps. He's taken two Raptor camps, he's taken a buff, he's been, like, just getting vision and, you know, supplying that information to his team, so he's done a good job of controlling the enemy jungler here. Ayukura just trying to shove this bottom lane wave into tower. She, uh, speaking of Ayukura, she has picked up a cloth armor already. Right, going aggressive on a quantum physics. Gets that third broken wings proc even after the uh, rift walk. So we might see uh, Zaya opt for the Ninja Tabby here over a different boot selection. Yeah, I think Sprite is just trying to build as much CDR as he can. That call fields will be going in towards probably Death Dance, I want to say, rather than uh, something like uh, Dust Blade, and that Kindle Gem obviously for the Black Cleaver. It could also be, oh, actually I'm not sure, it could be Ma still, you know, she could finish adding to Ma. Uh, she could... The call fields building in, the call fields could build into the Ma of Malmordius, yeah, but if that were the case, it could also I think build into would, Yomu's. Oh, Yes, yeah, Sprite gonna jump on a quantum physics, but Mystic DK in behind him. Wind Splash goes out, he's ignited, but it's not gonna go down. Explosive cast knocks him perfectly into tower, and quantum physics picks up the kill. I was really worried the knockback was gonna give her time to, you know, EQ and just finish off the, you know, an auto attack or hitting him with the Q. But you know, they really spaced it well, and he was able to, you know, get the Q off, pick up the kill there. I think actually Ignite killed her, with, um, Ignite with the tower track killed her before. I guess it does not Ignite. Yeah, yeah he has still so I think that was red buff. I made that mistake earlier in the tournament too. Yeah. I don't know. I, when I play when I play mid lane, I play cast and I just take knight because everyone's dumb and doesn't understand how his damage works. <laughs> I don't play uh, mid all that often, in case you didn't realize. All right. All right. Doctor Wildy and Ayukura getting pushed under tower, as has been the case in game one. They're relying on quantum physics roaming into the bottom lane. 
in order to make their advantages. Pippi getting zoned away by Dr. Wiley, but Chenny comes forward, just throws up the unbreakable, makes sure that she gets out safety safely. Quantum, it looks like he is going to have, you know, he's got to build up a bit more gold, but he should have enough to back when he does to pick up the uh, Rod, of Ages. Rod of Ages. And that'll start the spiral the Cassidy is always known for. When you yep. get the second item finished, I think Cassidy becomes a monster. Yeah, they're down about 1k gold. KU having those small advantages. And we, uh, Dragon is uh oh are you gonna mic it, dope? You're, there's the winner's bites and the concussive blows stacking up, but Quantum Physics getting jumped up by XY1 and Sprite, but he's got himself nice and safe, but he's taking the Thunderlord's proc, will get a second rift block now, Dr. Wildy having the spear stacked up, but here comes Mr. DK Chenny, gonna catch the belly slam, there's the explosive, or, uh, Glacial Fissure, explosive cast is available, but he can't use it now, face call, not throws him in, but he doesn't knock up anyone, and Chenny's in trouble, explosive cast blocked by the Unbreakable, throws Chenny out, but here comes Sprite, with a flash, flash, Sprite, Mystic DK. Dr. Wildy devours Ayukura. Now Sprite is trying to chase down what he can. There's a flash uh, the collateral damage, but nobody will die. Sprite wants it. He flashes on the side. He gets Dr. Wildy, but he will end up getting Mystic DK before he goes down to the tower. Ayukura picks up that kill. They did a great job of disengaging there. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Riven has a lot of mobility that she was able to catch up, but they did a great job of avoiding the wind slash. You know, Tom Kitch ate uh, the Zaya there. It was a great play by Dr. Wildy. Um, not a lot they could do there after you know, they got chased down. The KU do secure Tower First Blood, and now they're rotating over towards the Cloud Drake. They're up uh, 2.6k gold at this point. Cloud Drake, easy secure here. Uh, it'll provide a lot for them, you know. So Cassidy has uh, an advantage in that uh, he can roam very effectively. You know, even Rift Walk doesn't cost that much mana at the first level. So he's able to, you know, gank lanes. Uh, Air Drake is going to balance that out. It's going to make it a lot harder to avoid uh, counter ganks now. Yeah, and XY1 again in Mystic DK's jungle, denying him as much as he can. Sprite stuns up Quantum Physics. The Rift Lock is available. He actually uses it for damage. Now he backs himself away towards the tower. He's got himself a 10 CS lead over Sprite because of that roam into the bottom lane, but he's got been pressured constantly. Quantum Physics having a rough time in this matchup was not expecting Sprite to pull out this ribbon. All the CS is fairly even, excluding the jungle, which we've talked about quite a bit. Uh oh Sprite jumping onto Quantum Physics, Wind Splash not yet available. Uh, it looks like Riven is going to be building into the uh, Black Lever, which does provide a lot. You know, it's one of Riven's has staples. Used his hop. He's going to get chased down by Chenny and Pippi. He's got the concussive blow stu stunned up now, but they're going to back themselves away. Chenny taking a lot of damage from the tower. Almost goes down. They did still have face call. Abyssal Voyage being used in onto Sprite, but they're not going to have the ability to chase him. But not they do sure have what that three was. members here mid. They're, they should be able to push down this tower, but their bot tower is going to take a lot of damage here from the wind uh, splash to try and push out the wave. Yeah, but they've got four members of two jacks and three diamonds to contend within the mid lane. They will be able to get that tower, no problem. But they've got space to deal with in the bottom lane. You're right. So this is, I don't think this is what they want to be doing. You know, they caught up with some gold in that tower, but they're going to lose at bottom, and they're, uh, KU is going to be able to rotate top. They're going to take that tower extremely quickly with Callista. Callista, you know, being able to pepper it and pepper it like she does. Yeah, but space is secured second tier bottom tower for uh, KU just completely free. Mm -hmm. It is not looking good this game for two jackets, three diamonds. You know, we saw them dominate every champ or every game in this tournament. So maybe this is the one they finally lose. Uh, probably we're hoping to go through this tournament undefeated, but they, this could be the first one. Will KU be enough to challenge two jackets and three diamonds? And it's definitely not over yet. It's de uh, they're not behind enough that it's an absolute. Uh, defeat on their part. They can still come back from this pretty easily. Yeah. Ayukura and Dr. Wildy fighting off. Uh, Pippi and Chenny XY1 was there, but Mystic DK hidden away in the brush. We got Mechanical Reaper in the bottom lane as well. He's down a full Tiamat compared to uh, Space. Yeah, uh, they have uh, standard items. We see <laughs> Ninja Tabby on every champion for two jackets, three diamonds. Excluding Dr. Wildy. He'll have it soon enough. He's got that cloth yeah. armor there sitting, waiting to finish it. But it makes a lot of sense considering the team composition that KU has drafted. Yeah. 
poke. And Exploit 1, he's stealing away the Raptors, but Sprite is here to collapse on Quantum Fist, but Mystic DK coming in, Body Slam catches Sprite! He gets the shield, but here's Mechanical Reaper, he's gotta get the double stun, Quantum Fist will shut him down! That's exactly what you don't want. He already had the one kill, now he's got two, and he's gonna start spiraling out of control. Not only that, but he's got the Rod of Ages already finished, three stacks on it, building towards that ten stack Rod of Ages and another item. KU pressuring the top lane tower, Space he did channel his teleport already, so he won't have that. And it looks like they are going to be able to just clear fast enough that they, uh... Well, we're doing it at the same time because the convention closes early. This is a question about uh, why they did all the matches at the same time. The convention closes early on Sunday because it's the last day, so everybody really needs time to get back home. It's going to be a five-hour drive back to Kansas, yeah. for example. Yeah, Azio has a long drive to go through. Plus, we, we're, we've always kind of just done third-place matches uh, at the same yeah. time as first-place matches. But, we're sorry um, for any of you viewers who wanted to see Azio play against I, Team Accurs. I think Azio recorded their games. Alright, but Ayuk Kura and Dr. Wildy aggressing onto KU, Chenny, and Pippi because here's Quantum Physics! Pippi is uh, almost obliterated! The Ignite already used, Featherstorm goes out, but the Blade Collar not available. He flashes forward for Quantum Physics, Sonic Killing Spree, Dr. Wildy taking up the tower. Here's Mystic DK! Chenny gonna jump away towards the minions and the Flash Sprite stuns them all up! Mystic DK and Quantum Physics moving forward. Mechanic Reaper trying to deal with space in the mid lane. Yeah, unfortunately, All of them got out. Sprite goes in. He gets the stun, but he's caught by the body thing. He has to broken wings his way out to safety. Here comes XY1. They knock up Mystic DK. The end of the line used. XY1 still has the collateral damage ready and waiting. Dr. Wildy will survive. Mystic DK with a body slam flash. Explosive just knocks in Sprite. He will get focused out. Mystic DK gets that kill. Mechanic Reaper's here. XY1 running for his life. Mechanic Reaper flashes. Misses the boomerang, but it's not going to matter. He's got the hyper break. Just one more auto will be enough. He gets the kill. Space on the other side. Here comes Jenny. DK did go down in the end, but a big swing back in favor of Two Jackets, Three Diamonds. Yeah, he, uh, Mystic DK did a great job of being patient and, you know, waiting until he had the precise opportunity to really go in and disengage, or not disengage, but negate their engage. You know, he didn't allow the Riven and Jarvan to initiate when they wanted to. He decided when the fight was going to start, and he body slammed it and landed the explosive cast, and it turned out well for his team. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe not as well as we uh, they would have liked. Because they, they are taking the, fight, the tower. But they here. lose the tower. Yeah. Now three towers to one. They were so low after that fight that the respawning members of KU able to just take away that tower uncontested. Uh, unfortunately, they are all, all top lane, so they're going to be able to uh, not take this dragon as soon as it spawns. It looks like two jackets, three diamonds is going to move aggressively towards it. They're going to get their vision set up, and they're probably going to take it as soon as it spawns. Yeah, but the Red Herald is on the table for KU. Sprite has a black cleaver already. Quantum Physics building the Iceborne Gauntlet on uh, Cassidy as well. That's going to give him extra mana scaling as well as that Sheen proc and some armor for this full mm -hmm. AD team. Yeah, Iceborne Gauntlet's going to be a great item this game. It provides a lot of Cassidy, uh, a lot of what Cassidy needs. You know, he's got 20% CDR on that. He's got a lot mana, of armor and mana. Proc, machine proc. And he's got armor for this full AD team. The mountain or the cloud drake secured by XY1, and now Mystic D Gate is stuck in no man's land. He's rendered to death by Mechanical Reaper. Nars two into the wall. Sprite going so low. Quantum Physics. Ayukura coming across the side. Sprite flashed over the wall. Double kill for Quantum Physics, but the collateral damage takes out Mechanical Reaper out the back side. So. Yeah, you did a great job there. You know, the, the Riven got out, she jumped over the wall, but they also secured the dragon and traded two for two. Yeah. Okay, but now Unfortunately, all three... Oh, oh they now. stayed a little bit too long. Ayukura dodges the flag and drag with the feather storm. Got caught by the cataclysm. Ayukura's by herself, but she's devoured by Dr. Waldy. But XY1 beats down quantum physics. They lose Ayukura as well. And now Space looking for Dr. Waldy. Will he get him? He's got that great health space. Yeah, <laughs> He's there's just not a lot he can do at this point. Uh, wow, I really am surprised that Graves was able to pull out the kill there on Cassidy, and he did a lot of damage in not a lot of time. Yeah, look at that Dusk Blade of Drakthar as uh, well as another serrated dirt finished off. Building got, the newly updated lethality. Yeah, lethality. Wow, and XY1 is really showing what those lethality buffs can do. Look at him, he's level 12 compared to Mystic DK's level 9. Yeah, being three levels up is definitely a result of him taking three or maybe four. We might have missed one. Uh, taking three Raptor camps away from Grag is a huge chunk of XP in the jungle. 
Kozda is going to finish her Bork here soon. Uh, she'll get it after she backs. But uh, that's going to put her in a large spike, especially against champions like Dar and Gragas. Uh, even Cassidy, who did build the Rod of Ages, uh, she's going to be able to rip their health apart. Yeah, it's These fights are so chaotic. It's 10 to 10 right now in terms of kills, but three towers to one and a lot of advantage in terms of EXP. I think almost across the board... Oh no, Ayukor is actually up in levels over Pippi, but... XY1 is so much stronger than Mystic DK right now, but Sprite might be caught out here. Three members, a two jackets, three diamonds collapsing onto him, and there's no escape from Quantum Physics. Or is there Sprite? No! Riftwalk is on too low of a cooldown. Quantum Physics on cast are now 6 and 1. Quantum Physics and uh, Ayukura really are going to be counted on to carry this game. Mm -hmm. On KU Gaming, we see a lot of. Uh, we see a lot of spaced out gold here. You know, Jarvan's got two kills. Uh, Graves has got four. Riven's got two. Callista's got two. That's a lot of spread out gold between yeah, there's everyone. There's a lot concentrated into quantum physics on the side of two jacket, three diamonds. And uh, two air drakes is going to be really devastating. Air drakes is really good if you get multiple, if you get multiple air drakes. Yeah, exactly. So if we do see the third one come up, it's going to be very hard to stop there. Ro you know, there are potentials to rotate between different lanes and different objectives. Yeah, and now KU, they've got four members here stacked in the mid lane. They want that last outer tower. And I don't know if Mystic DK, Dr. Wildly, and Ayukua can really stop this one. Space Nar is, is ready gonna with the flag in. and drag. He's going to flag and drag out to safety. Mystic DK flashed with the body slam. Misses the explosive cast. Mechanical Reaper gets into the back, but he can't gnar anyone. Wallop misses. Goes wide now. KU ready for the re-engage. Fate's call doesn't knock up anybody, but they've already used the uh, Glacial Fissure as well. There we go. Ayukura getting chased away. Mechanical Reaper trying to do what he can. Space ready with the flag and drag. He goes in. No, he misses. He flashes too early. Cataclysm onto four members, but he's gone down. Space is the first kill of the fight. They lost two, though. There we go. It's a big win for KU. Quantum Physics, the only remaining member of two jackets, three diamonds. So they missed the first engage. You know, they spent a lot trying to engage the initial time, and then they didn't have enough. They didn't have disengage after using explosion cast. Uh, Nar not hitting one wallop and missing. That was Bobby super, from both sides, yeah. super interesting fight. But in the end, KU come out ahead. Four for one. They're focusing down the Baron, and there's no chance of a steal with the help of Callista. Got the rend ready. <laughs> Nothing Hopefully. like smite on an ADC, huh? Oh, smites early, but they definitely <laughs> smited as well from XY1, but it doesn't matter. There's no chance of a steal from two jackets, three diamonds. It's four towers to one, plus the Baron in favor of KU. And Riven has completed her death stance at this point, so she's going to be a lot tougher to kill. You know, she gives back a lot of health. Uh, the burn is a lot helpful for her because she can shield so often that it takes a lot away from that yeah. tick damage. Graves, he's probably moving towards either... Yeah, did, uh, they, did they change death stance that it's not reduced for AoE? Oh, it is still reduced for AoE. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I, I don't know if they changed that or not, but... Well, uh, but she does a lot of damage in an AoE, but she also does a lot of damage just auto-attacking because her uh, passive does increase the damage yeah. that it does. Flame Horizon in the jungle. Yeah, just yeah. about. Lord Dominique's regards now finished for XY1, so now he's taken some insurance against the sure-to-happen armor stacking on the side of two jackets, three diamonds, but he's so far ahead right now. There's not even a completed armor item on the side of two jackets, three diamonds yet. Which Unless is you really count that Iceborne. not what you want to see. Iceborne, I would count it, uh, uh, but it's on Kassadin. That's not who you need the armor on. You need the armor on the tanks. You need the armor on Gragas. Gragas pick, uh, picking up the Bramble Vest. He will complete Thorn Mail soon, but I would have really liked to see that on Gnar a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. Gnar building towards the Randuin's Omen. Randwins is going to be good. Uh, unfortunately, the slow is going to be a lot less effective because Calista is just going to jump instead of walking anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right, Space got some free time with this top lane tower. Uh, but here's Quantum Physics. Iceborne got a little slow him up and Quantum doesn't want to chase too far. He's actually down a level to Kate, uh, Space as well. There's not a lot he can do this game. Uh, you know, they're up in CS a lot. He's down... Um, Oh, he's not down from his later, but he's down in response to Jarvan. He's down 30 CS compared to him. Right. And that is three air drakes for KU Gaming. It looks like they three are going to pick up the third. Drakes. Holy cow. Three so they're going to be moving really fast. Yeah, especially uh, when, if they do take Elder, they're going to be super fast. 
We do see Jarvan with the Gargoyle. It lets him, you know, go in even if his team isn't quite ready yet. Uh, XO Quantifus goes in on the sprite, but there's a lot more. Can you never expect it? He's shut down by Pippi. Explosive cast to disengage with Split still on him. There's the Lightning Dragon. Space goes in. The Glacial Fissure dodged by Ayukura Feather Storm, but it doesn't matter. Cataclysm now. There's no escape. The Ayukura Feather Storm goes in. The Glacial Fissure dodged by Ayukura Feather Storm, but it doesn't matter. Cataclysm now. There's no escape. He gets shut down. Triple kill for Pippi. And now KU ready and waiting to go for this bottom lane tower. Yeah, they did a great job engaging there on Quantum while you didn't quite have his team ready. So they are going to push down this tower, and it looks like it's going to be a uh, victory for KU Gaming as the game, you know, is kind of spiraled out of control in their favor. They're up 10k gold. Almost 11. Now it is 11.5k gold. After that sixth tower goes down in the end, they have a 26 minutes. KU strike back. They should be able to finish this game pretty promptly, especially with the three air drakes. Let's them rotate between the lanes super efficiently. Um, this, this is, this is uh, I mean, after such a decisive game on one, here. after such a decisive game one, this kept, game went back and forth for a little while, but now KU is firmly taking control, and they have the momentum in their favor. Yeah, coming back is going to be definitely hard from here. Riven uh, is building Tiamat. No longer really applies to her animation canceling. They uh, fixed that when they changed it a little bit. Uh, so I'm not. Uh, she's going to be yeah, building however, the Ravenous. The Ravenous Hydra yeah. combined with Death Dance is a really lot of good. healing. Uh, it does heal from the AoE that it provides, which is a unique interaction you don't really see in League a lot. You know, items that stack with each other, not only uh, one way, but both ways. So Hydra makes Death Dance better, and Death Dance makes Hydra better. Yeah. Quite truly. Alright, but KU, they've got the inside track onto this mid lane tower. Quantum Fist is going to go in on the Sprite. There's the Flag and Drag out to safety. Quantum still wants to look for Sprite, but here comes the remaining members of KU. The Fate Call knocks up Dr. Wilde. There he goes. He goes in with the Ritual, but he's exhausted. They've killed off Sprite. Good night, Reaper! And now, Quantum Fist is going wild! They're focusing their face on the back side. Mechanic Reaper goes in next by one. It's a triple kill for Mechanic Reaper before he goes down. It's the ace for two seconds. Three diamonds, and they turn it around. <laughs> what oh, is man. happening in this game? I wish, I wish the audience, or I wish the the stream viewers could, uh, I guess, audience works, could see everybody who looks at Alex when he starts getting into it. Man, all the heads turn, especially in something this exciting. He gets really into it. You know, we saw the comeback. They, uh, they ace them, which is impressive on its own, but. You know, uh, people who didn't have a lot of gold got a lot more gold. Uh, yeah, no, Nar now has four kills. Super intelligent what they've done there. Dr. Wildey tanked the tower for that lone minion so that it takes away backdoor plating and they get the tower. Yeah. But they're still in such a huge deficit. Two towers to seven. That was only the second tower they take in this entire game. Yeah, the KU engage was pretty questionable. They were focusing the tower, and the Braum went in off the uh, the Fates call, and nobody was really there to back it up, especially because Grag has had enough to disengage into the Gnar, who was able to stun a lot of them into the wall. So maybe the engage wasn't as bad as we think, and it wasn't the greatest engage, but the combination of Grag and Gnar to displace enemies is so good, and they just they played it extremely well. They played off of each other. Yeah, space, space got focused, focused down by a large number of members of two jackets, three diamonds, while quantum physics and mechanical reaper go in really hard into the back line, and they can't—they just kill them all. And then, and that's what the armor scaling that we're starting to see is—they can't get through the armor. Yeah, uh, Mr. DK tanked a lot of Callista Spears. You know, he was the focus there, which isn't what you want to do here. He's got uh, Knight's Foul already. He's building towards Thorn Mail. He's going to be a monster. Here we go. Baron starting up here in a or spawning here in about 45 seconds. Quantum physics finds Sprite stealing away the Raptor. He'll just take it for himself. Sorry, Mr. TK. You don't get Raptors at all this game. Yeah, I I mean I think he's taken it once. You know, oh, that's once. Rough. That's rough. He's still three levels down to X Y one. Three Hex Drinkers coming out from KU Gaming. They really want to stop all of Quantum's damage. Even though he opted for the Bruiser build, he still is going to output a lot of damage with the yeah. setup. He's probably going for the Void Staff as his next item, I can only assume. I can't imagine what else he'd build out of Blasting Wand at this moment. Yeah. Uh, oh, a little bit of lag here. Are the games Not okay? a little bit. Well, this is a lot more than we've seen in the past. Oh, right, we're back? Alright, fantastic. 
All right, so three Cladric still on KU Esports. They've got they've got control of this Baron area, and it's spawning now. KU immediately started, and I don't know if two Jacks, three Diamonds are going to be able to get there in time. Pippi is stacking up those Rend Spears. Chenny going to throw out the Glacial Vision just to keep them all away. Teleport coming in from Mechanical Reaper. The Baron is secure by KU. They send a Mystic DK. Quantum Mystic now running because here goes the Teleport Rose face. Dr. Wildy. He's a Mystic DK, now they're running for it. XY1 flashes for the damage, that's a lot! Space goes in with the Cataclysm, Quantum Physics flies in the back line. Pippi has already killed Dr. Wally, but they got XY1, that's a lot of damage. Pippi now stacking up the red stack with the real authority, triple kill for so, Pippi. So, real quick, I really want to talk about Jarvan. So, KU's space, he did a great job, he stopped Nars back, and then immediately, or, uh, he stopped Nars teleport, and then immediately started teleporting afterwards, because Nars doesn't have any CC as in his mini form, and he yeah. took quite a bit of damage, but he really secured the fact that that would be a 4v5 fight. Yeah, and now KU, they're gonna get the inhib in the bottom lane. <laughs> I think Sprite didn't realize the inhib was up, just because he started taking the Nexus Towers, yeah. thinking they would try and take it. But and, uh, you gotta take the first. But now yeah, they should be it. able to it's finish here. Baron up super so minion. The second game is gonna go to KU. Yeah, KU tie up the series over two jackets, three diamonds. And that is gonna be the first game lost uh, for two jackets, yeah, three diamonds. This entire uh, tournament. So it will be tied up one to one in favor of. Uh, two jackets, three. Di or sorry, KU Esports over two jackets, three diamonds. We are gonna take a short break before yeah. we get into game number three between these teams to see who will go put themselves ahead in the series. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in just a few.